And joining on the line, it is great to welcome to Flow. We have got Tanya Murray. G'day, Tanya. How are you doing today? I'm good, thanks, Clayton. How are you? I am excellent. Welcome to Flow. And uh, Tanya, why has it taken you so long to come out with your song? Why? Why? I feel like it should have been done years ago. Why? Why have you taken so long? <laughs> You're asking a hard question there. That's a good one. Why? Um, oh, gosh. I, I, look, I, I honestly don't know. Um, courage, I suppose. Yeah. I, was, I was really encouraged by... Um, uh, my, my publicist, Nadia Drayton, who's also my best mate, and she's been in the industry for a long time. I've uh, been writing country music for a very, very long time, folk country music. And um, I guess we finally had a conversation where she really, uh, you know, smoked me out of my hole and, and pushed me over the line into the deep end to, uh, to record these two tracks. And, um, yeah, I guess I just needed, I needed to believe in myself, and, and I've enjoyed the journey ever since. How many bottles of wine did it take? Uh, <laughs> Come on, Tanya. you well, I was in cast. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nadia was drinking a sparkling red, and she was probably two glasses in, and I would have been at a similar, a similar pace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're joking, but sometimes that's the way you, you make those decisions when you're having a drink with your friend, and it's yeah. suddenly you know you, you realise yes you can do it, and that's so good on Nadia for doing that. And uh, so was it was this conversation that she had to give you that courage to finally do it? How much when you finally got in there to record the song, and then you heard it back? Were you sitting there looking at it, going kind of like thank you, this is I really needed to do this? Oh yeah, it was. I mean, it was a huge buzz. The, the two songs that we went in to record with, and the first one is the one that um, we'll talk about shortly, the yeah. first release. Well, I mean, the good thing was is that I believed in both of them. I mean, they were the bare bones. It was just uh, the way that I presented them to the producer was just a guitar track and a vocal track. Yeah. And um, but but I still really did believe in the song and the overall vision, and um, I knew that they had uh, potential. So basically, the producer. Put, uh, built on the song so he'd layer the track so first he put down you know the drum part and then the bass and then the banjo and then the strings and then yeah. you know whatever other instruments he used on each track so it was it was like building the song from the ground up and just seeing it come to life slowly over the course of a couple of days and and uh yeah it was just it was, it was a beautiful way to see it come together because it wasn't like it was this uh, guitar vocal track and then all of a sudden it was a full song it, there was a real build um, yep. of each part of the song, and yeah, it was it was great to see Matt at work doing that. Yeah, he's very good, isn't he? He's, he's got yes, great. He's, he's great, very yeah. good. Uh, very was, laid back. Was was Nadia over his shoulder saying to her raise the fader on her background vocals to be a bit higher? Was I, I can imagine uh, her doing that. Nadia is very very confident in in uh, in what she wants and um, <laughs> and what she thinks will sound good. So yes, not just the backing vocals that she did an amazing job on. Um, you know, she was quite uh, vocal in, uh, in 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 the instrumentation yeah. and and all those sorts of things that um, that that go into putting a song together and producing a song. So she was very upfront with, now I don't want too much of this and I want plenty of that. Um, yep. yeah, so that was great because she knows, she, she's got an ear for what, what, what people want to hear in the industry and, um, and that is so important and really key to, uh, to you know, getting things to the point yeah. that you want them to be at, which is to get, get some um, people really digging the track. And the track, it's called Follow Me Down to the River. It's a foot stomper and it gets you going very quickly and you're, you're into it. And your voice is absolutely amazing into it as well, Tanya. So, oh, thank you. And that's why I think, why has it taken so long? And then, But when you hear it, you're going to love it. It is it's a song we're going to hear more and more of. I am absolutely certain of that. But Thank you. I hope so. Tell us your story, though. How did, how did all the, your musical journey begin? So I, from home, about the age of 13, I decided that I wanted to be a singer, as many young people do. And um, I got into singing lessons, and then I went on um, Channel 10's New Faces at the age of 15, and, and um, I won that, which was which was a massive thing. It's, um, you know, it was great for my confidence. Yep. And from then I, you know, really decided that I wanted to, to, to be a vocalist as a career and be, you know, fronting up a band. So I left school in, um, in year 11 to, to start singing on cruise ships around the world. So I was 17, I was still underage and somehow my parents thought I was mature enough to do that. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so went traveling around on cruise ships and that was an amazing experience at such a young age. 
um, and uh, then came back to Sydney and, and, you know, started doing tribute shows and doing solo gigs with with my acoustic guitar and, um, yeah, and then started songwriting and, uh, you know, here I am today. I've, I've, I've also dabbled in um, uh, rock as, um, yep. as a genre to write in and had a, bit of su- had a bit of success with that, with a duo that I have called Little Pleasures. Yep. Um, but only in recent times, really during the COVID lockdown, did I um, start considering following my dream to record country music as a soloist. And you're doing all right, based on your first track that I've heard. But you're doing all right. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah. it was actually written a long time ago, um, and it's always been a leader. So, uh, whereas the the second track that we recorded is a very very recent song, but yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Um, I've um, yeah, I've had a long time to think about how I want the song to sound and how how I want to approach the vocals and everything, and I'm really really happy with the end result. It says here that you grew up on a strict diet of Cat Stevens and Simon and Garfunkel, and I sure did. And uh, I, I, they they the music of Simon and Garfunkel and Cat Stevens influenced me when I was young too. And I can remember sitting in my bedroom, listening to you know Scarborough Fair and all those great songs, oh, and yeah. they, and they just and there was something about them. And I think that anyone that hasn't listened to those sort of that era of music from Cat Stevens and Simon and Garfunkel, they they've missed out. They have certainly yes, missed out. I- I agree, a hundred percent. Particularly, well, I mean, they're, they're kind of the same, but they're also very, very different. But yeah. Simon and Garfunkel, just you know, the, the harmonies. If you grow up listening to that and you're a, a muser or a songwriter or a fan, you, you know, it's it's in a, a class of its own, really. And obviously, you know, then you've got Paul Simon, who is one of the best songwriters of all time. Mm. Um, yeah. So, but but I did take a lot from from their backing vocals or their harmonies, should I say, not yeah. their backing vocals. And now the songs that I write today are very, very heavily, um, you know, c- centred around great harmonies and, and um, backing vocals. So I just love that sort of thing in songs. So I think if I ever go on tour, I'm going to have to make sure I've got, apart from Nadia, um, members of the band that can do backing vocals yep. so that it really holds it together in a, in a really haunting way. The other thing is, uh, and you mentioned it before when you were talking about uh, producer Matt Fell helping you and about building the song. I mean, they built their songs, and, and I'm thinking one that's always stuck with me is the boxer and the way that oh, that just yeah. builds and sustains. Yes, and, yes that's and, right. It, and starts, it, yeah. it starts simple, and then um, and then it you know yeah it totally peaks at the end of yeah. the song, especially with that la 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 la. Yeah, that's true, definitely. It's a real journey, that one. And then when it finishes, all you want to do is uh, hit rewind, play, and start it again. So Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, Tanya, I know yeah, There's not a dud. There's not a dud with them. Oh, absolutely not. Now, your last name, Murray, it's familiar to many of us uh, because of your father, your late father, Les Murray. So um, yes. I just want to say from my perspective that being someone in the media, that uh, your dad had an influence on me. Not so much because of his love of, of football, which I have as well, and but it was more because of the way that he enunciated and pronounced names. And that, to me, was something that I felt I had to do and to get right. And many a time I've done that with someone's name, and they have complimented me on getting it right. So I just want to say I've n- I never got to meet your father, and I wish I had of, And uh, but just I want to pass on to you a big thank you that he influenced me, and I don't think I would be in the position I am now with people and talking to them if it hadn't been for some of the influence that your father, Les Murray, had. Oh, well, firstly, you're welcome, and... Uh it's it's great to hear that he's positively influenced and, and uh, enhanced your career and what you do because you're right, you know, it's just the little things that make the big difference. It's like when you go to a foreign country where they don't speak English and you, you at least make an effort to learn how to say hello or excuse me in yeah. their language. You know, it's, it's much better than just rocking up and uh, assuming that they all speak English. So I totally understand that. And, yeah, I mean, I... I to be honest, I don't know how he how he did that. It's like he knew the alphabet of every single country in the world, and yeah. um, just at first glance, he'd, he'd get a name right. So, you know, especially you know, English was his second language. So, yeah, it was a real gift that he had. That's for sure. And I'm I'm really glad that it's uh, it's helped you. It certainly did, and I also wish he was hosting a football program that we could all watch right now. It would be great to see. So, <laughs> so do I. He's yeah. Yes, he's really, really missed. That's that's for sure. By many people, I get a lot of people telling me that, and um, obviously, I miss him on a personal level. Um, but I definitely miss the impact that he had, and and he was your go-to person in the lounge room yeah. on you know whichever show you were watching that he was on, and and um, I, I don't think that anyone's been able to replace him. 
Absolutely not. Was he a fan of your music too? 100%, yeah. yeah. He was 100% a fan, and um, as is my mum, but my dad, is uh, he was a singer when he first left school. He was a singer in a band before he became a commentator, so he himself wanted to go down that road initially, but obviously he took a different path, which is, you know, which is a good thing. Yep. But um, we wrote some songs together as well, and uh, he... he, he He's the one that raised me on Cat Stevens and Simon yeah. and Garfunkel and all the other great harmony groups, Doobie Brothers, those sorts of groups. So, yeah, um, yeah he, he definitely had a big impact on my music, more, more so than anyone. And he inspired me. I wanted to, um, you know, uh, he encouraged me and, and I wanted to show him that I could be an artist that he would like to listen to. So, yeah. So when are you going to write a song about him? I've actually already written a song about okay, him. It's sort yeah. of a more of a folky Celtic song, and it's yeah. um, I don't know. For, for those of you who've, who've lost someone very close to them, you really experience how nice it is when someone who's passed comes to visit you in your dreams. And yeah. um, so this song is is about that. It's about um, you know, I'm I'm uh, basically shackled. And uh, but when he comes to visit me in my dreams, the shackles give way. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a song I would like to pursue. It's not it's not um, it's not one that I wanted to do this first round of recording, but I I really love it and it's really special to me. And um, I just like to record it just just to have it there in a, on a you know at its full potential. Well, as someone who's uh, has also lost his father. Um, oh, I'm, okay. I'm, Sorry to hear that. I'm looking forward to hearing it because uh, I just <laughs> I just feel it's a song that you need to do to share with others that have gone through a similar experience. So, oh, thanks, thanks, Clayton. That that's that's really encouraging. I've not really spoken to anyone about it um, in the industry, so apart from Nadia. So, um, yeah, you've, you've you've inspired me there. I might have to to dust it off and listen to it again and see where I can go with it because it's um yeah I think it'd be a beautiful healing experience and yep. um. Just hope that that uh, wherever our fathers are, <laughs> they can they can hear from there. <laughs> Let's hope it's nowhere near any alcohol because it might get messy. But anyway, another thing. <laughs> oh, for, my dad would be uh, smoking cigarettes for sure. <laughs> oh well, he'd be in good company because my dad would be doing the same thing. And that, so. Now the song "Follow Me Down to the River." Just before we get to hear it, I, you, you said that you've got another track coming out as well. Um, yes. Are these working towards an, an album or an EP? Because I don't think two is going to be enough. No. Well, we just, to be honest, it was under the advice of Nadia that I should record two and give it absolutely everything I've got in terms of the budget. And uh, we've done a great video clip for "Follow Me Down to the River," Ooh. and. Um, so, and we'll, we'll hopefully do the same with the second song. So we just wanted to, to put it out there and see what happens and then make a decision on what we're going to do. Obviously, they're just two singles to start with. Yep. Um, bigger picture. The truth is I don't know, but I'm hoping that we get some traction, um, which inspires us to, uh, to definitely take it to the next level, be it an EP or an album. Um, don't waste time on an EP. Go straight to an album. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that as well. I think uh, my thoughts are either a full album or just dropping singles, basically. Uh, I want to hear an album. I want to know where we're going to go. So oh, yeah. that, that's me. I'm old school. I like. I, I think albums. I don't think singles. I think albums. So I'm, I'm old school like that. Now, you said video. When's the video out? So the video is out on the official release date, which is the 5th of October, one week. Well, the 5th of October, yes. Yep. And what day? Well, you can never remember. Um yeah, so on the 5th of October, the song is released on all the usual platforms and, uh, yeah, the, the, video chip, uh, the video clip will go live on YouTube. And how do we get it, your music? I assume we can go to, like, you know, iTunes and places like that? Yes, yeah, so today you can pre-save the song on iTunes by searching my name, which is Tanya Murray, and it's Tanya with an I. You can also search Tanya Murray Official on Facebook or Tanya Murray Official on Instagram. And once you jump to my page, you hit that like button um, or you can just scroll down and you'll see the uh, instructions on how to pre-order it. So you can pre-order and pre-save on uh, iTunes, Apple Music and also Spotify.
Yep. Yeah, I'm just looking at that now as my iTunes screen has just come up. And, um, and then I can see the, the ordering thing there. Okay, got that all set to go. Um, so uh, what, what's y- y- the song's going to be out. What's next? Are you looking to, hopefully, if things open up, uh, do some shows and do some touring? And, and I know yeah, some wine yeah, we said I can introduce you to and perhaps Nadia as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I'll definitely have to make sure that Nards would be available to, to do the tour because that's a given she has to um, come with. So um, we are just, obviously, uh, there's been an unknown period of yeah. well, this uncertainty of when we're going to open up and who can go where and the, the, the borders, state borders and all that sort of thing. Um, but as, that, as we get close to that vaccination rate, certainly our own state will be uh, opening up in terms of bars and clubs and things like that, then um, there's Tamworth next year. So okay. we'll just, it's very much see what happens with this first song. Um, and uh, But I definitely would like to play it in a live situation with a band, 100%. I'm from uh, Lake Macquarie, which is near Newcastle, and there's a lot of country musos around this area, so it would just be a real buzz to get into a rehearsal room with all of them and Nadia and just uh, giving it a crack and see how it sounds and then look at touring. I think it will sound absolutely wonderful and um, based on this first track, I think this is going to be awesome to hear more of it. So that's just... Thanks, Clayton. That's just well, I hope everyone gets behind it like you do. <laughs> well, I, I think they will and they're all set to hear it. So, Tanya, I just want to say thank you so much for spending time with us today on Flow. I've really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for allowing us to talk Thanks about your dad me. as well. It's been an absolute pleasure and I dare say we're going to have more conversations in the future. Say good day to Nadia for us as well. We've got your song here ready to go for all the Flow listeners. If you can please introduce it for us. Thanks, Clayton. You're listening to Tanya Murray. This is my debut single, Follow Me Down to the River. Follow me down to the river Feel no pain in the water Where the willow hangs like long hair 